On day three of the Portland Regional, they realized that the two three-point lines were at different distances, and these were the lines that had already been used in four Sweet 16 games in the two days prior, and no one noticed, including me. Some people are saying that it's kind of whatever because it all evens out, both teams play on each side equally, assuming that there's no overtime, and others are saying that it's a huge deal and Texas and NC State should have refused to play under such terrible circumstances. I don't really agree with that, but the NCAA released a statement along with the stats regarding the three-point shooting in these games, so let's take a look at those and decide for ourselves, and let me know what you think in the comments. Okay, so we'll look at this game by game and feel free to pause and look at the stats for yourself. All right, the first Sweet 16 game is NC State versus Stanford. We have here the three pointers made and missed by each team and the one in red indicates the half where that team was playing on the incorrect side. And it's been revealed that the incorrect side was actually about nine inches shorter than it should have been. The other side was correct. So the one in red, you would think that teams would make more shots because it's shorter. But in general, that's not exactly what happened. In this game, NC State went two of seven in the first half from the incorrect line. And then they definitely improved in the second half when they went five for 10 from three. And I think it's important not just to compare the stats of like the first and second half for these teams. I think it's also good to compare it to their seasonal averages for three point shooting because otherwise we don't really know like if it actually made a difference. Like maybe a team usually only makes one three in a game. In one of these games, if they made 100 on the shorter line, then we would know that it would make a difference. So then, especially when we look at Stanford here, they only made five threes, including two of 13 on the incorrect line. And usually they make over seven threes a game. So in general, they were kind of just sucking it up. <laughs> so maybe the line was throwing them off. Maybe they were just having a bad shooting day and it makes like everything else moot or who knows. All right, the second Sweet 16 game was Gonzaga versus Texas. Gonzaga was definitely sucking it up compared to their usual three point average over nine a game. They only made four in this game and they made the same amount in both halves. Texas isn't a team that averages a lot of threes, but they made their season average in the half where they had the shorter line. So did the shorter line help them? All right, Baylor versus USC. I was there. Baylor started out with the short line in the first half. They made three threes and then they made six in the second half with the normal line. And this is where I might point out that teams tend to score more points in the second half compared to the first. There is a trend to score more points in the third quarter than the second quarter. It's not a huge difference, but there's an average difference of like one or two points at least. So it might be just that teams score more points in the second half. It doesn't matter like what the line was. And we see that for both these teams here, they scored more threes in the second half. USC made fewer threes in their season average, but they made one more on the shorter line. So did it help? them i don't know okay duke versus yukon i was also there and it was a terrible game you can see not very many threes were made especially in the first half and i would point out that there's always going to be some variability in the number of three pointers made by a team compared to the average like there's always like a season average for the number of threes that a team makes but there's also like a standard deviation for this and in Duke, the standard deviation for their three-pointers made was about three. So they made four, their season average was less than six, so it's not that crazy for them to just make four in a game. On the other hand, UConn usually makes seven a game, or that's their average, and their standard deviation is about two and a half. So if they made only three, three plus two and a half is still not seven, so it's a little more reasonable to say that maybe the line affected UConn in this case, or maybe this was just like an outlier game for UConn. Whether or not it was affected by the line, we can't say for sure. Okay, and then arguably the weirdest game is NC State versus Texas, the one Elite Eight game that they played knowing that the three-point line was wrong. So the coaches and players were aware of this problem, but just right as the game was starting, and I'm not sure if it like played any direct effect on how like the coaches made their game plan they didn't have much time to implement a game plan based on a line being nine inches too short but did they take advantage of the shorter line it kind of seems like they didn't nc state made half their three-point attempts but they made most of them in the first half and in the first half they had the normal longer line texas only made one three and it was with the shorter line but they're also not really a three-point shooting team and i also wonder if this is maybe the reason that vic schaefer the coach of texas was okay with with this three-point line issue because they don't usually shoot a lot of threes anyway so they don't really care yeah I don't know did the line being shorter help them make this one three probably not so overall teams took 89 attempts on the inaccurate line and 87 on the correct line 
they made six more on the correct line, even though the correct line was the longer one. So again, I don't really have a conclusion about whether or not this correct three-point line made a real difference in the outcome of any of these games. On one hand, players made fewer threes on the incorrect side. On the other hand, there's always going to be some variance in the number of threes or anything else made in a game. So we can't really say that this line caused them to make fewer threes. I think maybe in the case of the Elite Eight game where they knew about the issue, maybe it could have gotten in some people's heads either way, making them take more or less threes potentially. I'm not really sure if players shoot from a really precise distance every time, if it really made that much of a difference, these nine inches that the line was off. But I could be wrong, of course. There could be other spacing things that I have not accounted for in this analysis, obviously. So let me know what you think. Do you think that this three-point line being nine inches shorter affected the outcome of any of these games in a significant way? And I'll see you in the next video.